Every day when I talk to people, when I look at you know, our procedures, or I can learn, and I can learn to make our university more inclusive and, and more open to, uh, to diversity. So I think in every conversation I have, in every you know, number I see, in, in the way that I interact with staff, I can learn every day. My name is Catherine de Vries. I'm a professor of political science and a dean of diversity and inclusion at the Cornell University. The story about how I became the Dean of Diversity and Inclusion at Bocconi. So I think there's a professional answer and a personal answer. So the professional answer is that I was already a, uh, the chairperson of a committee for diversity and inclusion in the European Political Science Association. So when I came to Bocconi, I expressed interest in doing uh, things along the lines of diversity and inclusion, so it was a natural match. Um, I've also experienced, uh, you know, being a woman, I was a became a professor quite early on in my career in an environment that was very male at Oxford University. And that also had me, you know, equipped me with uh, possibilities of, of really uh, amplifying the voice of uh, demographically minorities in academia. And, uh, you know, that really also has uh, developed my path of trying to do more to increase diversity and inclusion uh, within the university and in academia at large. I think that diversity and inclusion is really crucial for understanding innovation in society, so especially within academia. So a lot of new perspectives and, you know, a lot of academics have to re-question what we thought or what we think. So in terms of doing that, new perspectives and very diverse perspectives, so people coming from different ethnic minorities, people coming from different socioeconomic backgrounds, of course women, LGBTQ, really have the possibility to add to that diversity in academia. And it really drives, you know, my drive is uh, really to try to develop inclusive spaces, universities being one of those, where people can really be themselves and, and, and really help to foster society and also to make the world around us a better place or to kind of, you know, leave the world in a slightly better place than we find it. So I think what I've learned really to be true is that diversity is a fact and inclusion is a practice. So you can slice any workforce or any group of people in very diverse groups, be it you know, socioeconomically, gender, sexual preference, sexual orientation, and that's a fact. And what we try to really do in, at Bocconi, but also in many other universities across the globe, is to really practice inclusive practice and to try to help people to you know, reach their fullest potential. And I think my own experience of having lived in different countries, of you know, having uh, studied topics that are about you know, maybe ex why people support exclusion or why people are less inclusive, has really helped me to understand that. So I think the key element for me is diversity is a fact and inclusion is a practice. So I think that there's a lot of elements where I think it would be really important that you know we as an entire community so that means not just women but also means men means uh, LGBTQ people means people of different backgrounds that we really all of us uh, decide to strive for well we want our rights we want to be accepted as full members of, a, of an academic or a working environment and we want to make sure that everyone gets treated equally and I think ultimately this should not be something that's only raised by women but it should be raised by societies at large because unleashing the possibility of everyone in society is ultimately going to help societies to foster to grow you know to be more innovative uh, and that's what we especially need in this moment in time you know where we're you know, dealing with a big pandemic and the aftermath of it. So I think what's really important, you know, the, the issue of empathy is in terms of being able to share experiences. So I realized as well, being a young woman in a quite male environment, that a lot of my, for a lot of my male colleagues, it was very natural that they took a position. I was asked by an administrator when I started working if I was the wife of. They didn't expect the person that was taking the job to be female. And of course, these kind of microaggressions that we experience every day in our working environments, you know, give us the feeling that we might not belong. And I think it's not, you know, in, in terms of a blame game, but it's more about sharing those experiences and making sure that we really develop practices that are inclusive and that allow people to be themselves and to reach their fullest potentials. So there's a lot of people who might think very similarly to you. And if you don't speak up, you know, no one will know that you have these kind of ideas or these kind of, uh, of queries or grievances in your life. And the other element is it's not enough to speak up, but it's then also to act. And we see that here in Bocconi, there's a lot of student associations and students work very hard when it comes to gender, when it comes to LGBTQ rights, when it comes to uh, people coming in from different ethnicities 
to really make sure that we, you know, root out discriminatory practices on our campus. The best situation would be is that people really feel that there's no discriminations. And, you know, I guess maybe ultimately would be that we really, you know, that diversity and inclusion becomes part of the DNA, that we don't even, you know, have to kind of focus on it anymore, but it's the natural way of our daily practice.